What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Part 4. Please relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, you could subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. When my parents were in college, they went on a trip down to Florida. They had met through mutual friends and were down there together but hadn't gone on a date yet. My dad and one of his friends were planning to meet my mom and some of her friends at a hotel, but being the carefree college guys they were, they lost track of time and realized it was impossible to get to the hotel on time by walking. They decided the best solution to their problem was to hitchhike and a car with two women picked him up. Everything seemed fine until the driver asked them if it was okay to stop for gas. My dad and his friend agreed it was no problem since they were making good time and she drove into a gas station. She then pumped her car full of gas before hopping back in and flooring it, basically stealing the gas with two hitchhikers in the back. My dad and his friend were beginning to freak out when she pulled a gun from under her seat and asked, Are we going to have a problem or something like that? My dad and his friend shook their heads vehemently, because what else do you do in that situation? She then drove them to the hotel and dropped them off without so much as a scratch, and they kinda thought nothing of it until the news started reporting on a serial killer in Florida known as Aileen Warnos. He took one look at her picture and instantly recognized her as the driver. The only reason my dad thinks she didn't straight up kill them was because they were supper polite and respectful to her and her victims, where usually scumbag guys trying to take advantage of her Tell DR Aileen Warnos is the reason my dad got to his first date with mom on time. Account 2. There's something wrong with Aunt Diane. Real life event where a woman drove a van full of children down the wrong way while being high on some drug before eventually hitting another car and killing herself and the kids. Really odd the similarities between Judy Kirby and Diane Schuler's cases. Edit. Had forgotten the details of Diane's case but she had apparently been horribly drunk. Empty handle of vodka found at the scene plus blood alcohol content, twice the legal limit in autopsy, and had tested positive for THC in her system. Account 3. I remember when I was younger, me and my cousin were hanging around. She had a day bed and we decided to get behind it and push it against the wall so we could play and nap in the dark. It got unbearably hot and we realized we couldn't breathe after about 30 minutes. If it wouldn't have also gotten so hot from our fear, body heat, lack of oxygen, we might have actually suffocated because we were getting lightheaded. It was scary. But eventually, we pulled the bed away from the wall. I have no idea how that could happen on carpet. Bizarre freak accidents are just so strange. Account 4. Sylvia Likens, whose parents left her in the care of a woman who both personally and with the help of her children and their friends, degraded, tortured, and killed over several months. Count five. Tough to pick just one because there is true evil in humanity out there. Stuff like the Blood Eagle ritual is pretty awful. But in terms of really scary, probably stuff that just kind of happens on accident, like the story of Kyle Plush, just awful. He was in a minivan that has one of those back seats that you can push backward to lay flat in the trunk for extra storage space. He went to grab something in the trunk, leaning over the seat, and it tipped backward and pinned him, upside down, against the back of the car in a position such that he couldn't get himself out. He called the police twice. The second time he called and gave them a very clear description of the car, Plush called 911 again at around 3 to 35 p.m., Police said this time he provided a description of the vehicle as he desperately pleaded for help but couldn't hear the dispatcher. Isaac said the information didn't get relayed to officers at the scene. This is not a joke, the teen said over 911. I'm almost dead, he asked the dispatcher to. Tell my mom I love her if I die. Just a horrible random accident that could have happened to anybody. This kid didn't go looking for trouble like he didn't try and go down a chimney or go caving like other people who have gotten stuck and suffocated. He was just reaching for something in his trunk, got pinned, and then was not found in time. Nightmarish for the kid and his family. Account 6. I don't regret many things in my life, but I regret this one deeply. I was leaving work, 2001, I believe. So while cell phones were common, not everyone had them. I worked in a small office building, 
You know those kind that rent out spaces to several small businesses I had stayed late on day. Only reason I feel as bad as I do. As I was leaving, I was the only other car in the lot. I noticed the property manager, an elderly lady and very sweet getting out of her car next to the dumpster holding a bag of trash. I drove past her, turned the corner, and went home. This was on a Friday night. Come to find out, she didn't put her car in park. I get in Monday to the news that she was pinned between the dumpster and her car until found on Sunday. Our dumpster was not visible from any main road. Had I been 30 seconds later in leaving, I would have seen it happen. Being elderly, the low impact still pinned her and broke some bones. Even though she was found alive, she didn't make it at the hospital. I don't know if I had seen it happen, I would have been able to react fast enough to warn her, jump out and push the car. It wasn't accelerating, just rolling slowly in neutral. Or if I had, would have even just been able to call 911 and her injuries treatable after not being outside for two days. And I can't imagine her mindset. We were in a commercial area. No real reason for anyone to be immediately within earshot if she called for help, which I'm sure she did many times. Account 7. The Hello Kitty murder in China, where a man and his about 13-year-old girlfriend kidnapped a prostitute who had supposedly stolen from him, even though sources say she had paid him back with interest, tortured her to death, and then stuffed her corpse into a Hello Kitty toy. Account 8. I'll tell you one that happened to me, or rather I was witness to. One night, I was out at a bar with a friend I was visiting in New Rochelle, NY. We went outside for a cigarette, and a car came flying past the bar. The car burned through a red light and started going up this hill that was on a curve. We watched as he veered over the double yellow and smashed head on with another car coming from the other direction. Both cars' hind ends lifted up, then slammed down. The car that was driving correctly burst into flames. I ran inside and grabbed the fire extinguisher, then yelled to the bartender to call 911 and say there has been an accident. My friend, a few other patrons, and me ran to the cars. Now, I used to think this was a fictional trope, but I was pretty drunk before this happened, and I swear it sobered me up instantly. I tried spraying the fire, but it did nothing. The fumes and heat were awful, and all we could do was stand back. The worst part was, and this will haunt me forever, was that the woman in the burning car was screaming as she died. My God, it was the worst sound ever. The fire department came and put the fire out. The police took us back to the bar and took statements. I found out the next day in the news that the car that was not speeding was being driven by a young woman coming home late from work. She was a block away from home, and I think she was either newly married or a new mother. The rotten motherfucker driving the other car was some rich, drunk cocksucker. He lost a leg, but otherwise was physically unharmed. I have no clue if he did time, as I left to go back home a day or so later. I'm trying to find a link for the news story, but I can't. As this was maybe six or seven years back, I remember it being reported on Low HUD and Channel 12 News. Account 9 Years ago, my now husband worked for an industrial laundry company in their head office when a PR disaster happened that also mentally screwed up a number of people. Their company collected laundry from large hospitals and medical-type businesses, e.g. care homes, etc., and cleaned them. You can imagine the sort of heavy-duty cleaning, bleaching, boiling, etc., needed to remove those sort of biological contaminants. One day, a laundry cart went through the usual bleaching, boiling cycle before it dropped out into a conveyor belt to be sorted for drying, pressing when there was a horrid scream. A small newborn baby's body had been discovered tangled up amongst the sheets. It had been cooked. The laundry workers were distraught. The whole place had to be shut down. Police called and the laundry tracked back to the hospital to discover what happened. It turns out a, thankfully in some ways, Stillborn baby had been left in the cot waiting to be taken down to the hospital mortuary after the parents had said their goodbyes and covered it with a blanket, but somehow one of the nurses hadn't realized. Just on shift was the best guess. So just grabbed up all the linen out the cot and off the bed in the delivery room with the body bundled inside and emptied it into the laundry hamper, trolley thing. 
The other nurse's parents assumed the baby had been collected by the mortuary to be stored awaiting their funeral decisions. The laundry was found not to be to blame, but the parents were devastated, and the hospital took a lot of flack. The poor laundry workers who discovered the body ended up being given counseling before eventually quitting. The laundry did amend its practice to individually emptying each laundry hamper into the industrial machines instead of just tipping them in to stop anything like that happening again. Account 10. On September 20th, 1987 in Bellingham, Washington, a Georgia Pacific paper mill worker was sent to inspect a heat exchanger system in the steam plant. Inside the base of the stack, he spotted a charred skeleton. To this day, no one is certain who the victim was, how they wound up in such a horrible place, nor why. Account 11. The Toy Box Killer and his transcripts, if you absolutely want to have your day ruined, this has to be one of the most disturbing, creepiest things ever. Serial killer David Parker Ray would play these tapes for his victims, so they had an idea of what was coming and to also mentally break them. Hear the start of one tape to give you an idea. Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under the circumstances. For a little while, at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It is very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you in detail why you have been kidnapped. What's going to happen to you and how long you'll be here? I don't know the details of your capture because this tape is being created July 23, 1993 as a general advisory tape for future female captives. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to wake up in a place you didn't know and have someone play these tapes for you telling you what horrible things were going to happen to you before you died? Account 12. I remember this poor kid who went missing while I was at Purdue. He was trying to come home to his dorm after a party and either wasn't able to get into the building or perhaps wanted to bypass the check-in desk. Just a guess based on my experience as a student there since he had been drinking. He entered the building through a door to an electrical closet that should have been locked and was electrocuted and killed that night. He was last seen January 13th and the body was discovered March 19th after reports of foul odors at the dorm. Edit. The body was found at Owen Hall, year 2007. I remember talking with friends about theories of what happened when he went missing. How terrifying it must have been to find out there was a dead body in your dorm for months. Account 13. My wife arrived at her parents' house that she was currently living in due to health issues of her father's. She got into the house, no one else was there at the time, and instead of going further in, stopped in the first room that held the computers which was right by the door. She went into the room and was messing around on the internet when one of the cats came into the room, her cat to be precise. Well, this cat was super laid back, loved everyone and never picked fights or got aggressive. He would literally lay down and let squirrels throw pecans at him from trees and do nothing but take it. Not tonight, however. Tonight he was growling and hissing intermittently while standing between my wife and the entrance to the rest of the house. A laid-back sweet old cat was acting like he was going to rip out a throat. Well, my wife decided that this was really fucking weird, so she picked up her cat and left the house. Lo, and behold, she sees a cop car patrolling down her street and flagged them down. She explained the situation and they told, demanded, that she stay in their cruiser while they both checked it out. Turns out they found the back door wide open. Super bad. Her parents and her never leave the door unlocked, much less open. She came to find out later from those cops that they were hunting down a serial rapist that had been spotted in the area, and that was why they were rolling down a safe, normally residential street, super spooky. Life pro tip, always trust the cat. Account 14. I was around 11 years old, and I woke up in the middle of the night to a man straddled on top of me with his hand over my mouth and nose. He told me to roll over and not scream. I rolled onto the floor and tried to scream bloody murder. I say tried cause when you are truly terrified it can take a second to find your voice. My mom heard me screaming and came in and fought with the guy. He was at least six, she was 5,3, and scared him enough with the fighting and screaming that he took off out the window he had come in through. Never did catch him. Account 15. 
Have you heard of the Nazi so bad that other Nazis, in particular fellow SS Nazis, constantly tried to get him and his unit disbanded and arrested? No. Well, his name was Oscar Derlewanger, and his unit was nicknamed the Black Hunters, or the Derlewanger Brigade. Oscar Derlewanger was an early adopter of the Nazi party. He had been thrown in jail before for being a pedophile. Eventually, when World War II broke out and healthy ideal Germans were dying in droves on the Eastern Front, Oscar, old pal Heinrich Himmler, head of the SS, granted him a command of a unit made up originally of German poachers, and eventually German criminals being held in civilian jails, camps, and military criminals, his unit was essentially designated as a rearguard unit meant to hunt down enemy partisans, or in most cases, civilians in occupied countries. Oscar Derlewanger SS unit was responsible for many atrocities. Some atrocities so barbaric and bad, other SS units reported him and his unit for atrocities. A few examples, which have been popularized in film, include taking an entire village in Belarus and putting them in a church locking the doors, and setting the church ablaze. Anyone who tried to escape was shot by machine guns and rifles. This unit raped, tortured, and murdered its way through Eastern and Central Europe. During the Warsaw Uprising, they were sent to help squelch the uprising. One of their atrocities committed was going into a children's hospital, telling the nurses and staff that they were there to secure the church. Okay, once the church was secured, they raped the female staff, and some of the wounded and sick female children victims, and then went around shooting everyone. If anyone was found to have survived, they were bayoneted. These guys were so horrible that other Nazis looked down their noses at them and constantly filed complaints and reports against them, but with no real success. Thankfully, by the end of the war, this unit was destroyed, and its leaders and criminal soldiers were hunt down like rabid animals.